Believe it or not, there's some people out there that think the GX550 failed the roller test because its rear wheels spun and didn't get off the rollers quick enough. There's still also people that think that traction control should have applied brakes to those rear wheels and somehow sent power to the front. And sadly, there's still people out there that don't understand how a torsion differential works due to an absolute dumb donkey of an incorrect viral video that you've all probably seen on YouTube that makes any torsion nerd want to puke. Today, we're going to be talking about Lexus GX550 full-time four-wheel drive myths. No. The Lexus GX550 did not fail the roller test. That roller tester put the Lexus GX550 with the rear wheels up in the air essentially, basically on rollers to simulate no traction, and he couldn't get it to uh, send power to the front, and so he deduced that the GX550 failed the test. It didn't fail. The torsion center differential needs to see a certain amount of speed difference between front and rear in order to self-lock or lock up and send power to the front and hop off those rollers. But don't take my word for it. I'm going to link a bunch of videos and you can see other vehicles, including a Lexus GX460 with the same torsion type C center differential, and as well as some other Audis, such as the Audi Quattro system, also with the torsion C type differential. And you'll see that after a certain amount of wheel spin, it will hop off the rollers. You simply need to give it a little more gas and it will hop off the rollers, no problem. That is normal, classic torsion center differential operation. But watch those videos. You're going to see one thing always happen, and that is you're going to see some wheel spin, then it will lock up, and then it will hop off the rollers. How much gas should you give it to lock up the torsion? Well, you need to pretend kind of like you're at a traffic light, and there's 20 cars behind you. You're at a red light, and now it turns green. You're going to go on the gas like you mean it. You're not going to roll on the throttle. You're not going to be gentle. You're not going to be steady. You're going to get up and go. If you apply the throttle, just like you're at a red light that just turned green, it's going to lock up nearly instantaneous. Now we need to talk about traction control for a second. A lot of people say on that roller test with the rears on rollers and the front down on pavement that somehow traction control should have applied brakes to the rear wheels here and then that will somehow send power to the front. And that is impossible because we're not talking about left and right drive shafts on a front or rear axle. Instead, we're talking about the center differential, which controls the front drive shaft and the rear drive shaft. You can apply brakes to these rear wheels all you want. You can actually slam on the brake and you can put on the e-brake. With the center differential, you can lock up these rear wheels and it's not going to lock up the rear drive shaft. So the rear drive shaft is never locked. So traction control cannot apply brakes to these rear wheels and somehow magically send power through the drive shaft, through the center differential, and through to the front. Because remember, every differential has one input and two outputs. On your rear, you have a rear differential and a left and right output. On the front is the same. In the center, you have a differential and the two outputs, again, are the front drive shaft and the rear drive shaft. And no amount of playing around or locking the rear brakes is going to lock the output, one of the outputs of the center differential, the rear drive shaft. It's impossible. We know this because you can put on your e-brake, lock your brakes, and turn your rear drive shaft by hand. There's simply too much 4x4 prattle out there about traction control systems locking up and figuring it out and sending power up, down, and left, right without anybody knowing what the heck they're talking about. <laughs> Remember, applying brakes to one output of a differential sends the power to the other output of that differential. So in the case of a center differential, you would have to break somehow the front drive shaft or the rear drive shaft in order to send power to the opposite drive shaft. Obviously, there's no break inside of your torsion differential in the sense of a wheel brake on your wheels, on your front and rear axles. But of course, there is a break inside of your torsion C-type differential 
and it activates when it sees a bona fide real speed difference between front and rear drive shafts. So if you just apply the gas and your rear wheels are up in the air, if you apply enough gas, it'll see a speed difference and the helical gears will thrust against the friction plates inside of that differential and it will lock the front and rear together. Now we have a lock. And I think a lot of the misconceptions about how a torsion even works comes from a really dumb viral video that you've all seen on the old school Torsen type 1 or type A differential, whatever you want to call it, where the guy prattles on and on about worm gear and worm drive. And that is the dumbest, most incorrect viral video that exists on YouTube today. A Torsen does not have a worm gear and a worm wheel. It has crossed helical gears. In that video, it says the worm wheel cannot drive <laughs> the, the worm gear. Nonsense. They are two crossed helical gears in a torsion and they can drive each other. So that video is fundamentally incorrect. Add to the fact that it's viral and you have all these prattling repeaters all over the internet going, torsions work because the worm wheel cannot drive the worm gear and that is how it locks up. And they're parroting this and prattling this and they're all wrong. All 10 million of them are wrong. Torsen works because it has helical gears as mentioned. Nothing to do with a worm wheel and a worm gear or whatever. They work because helical gears thrust when they see enough speed. So if they start to spin too fast, they thrust sideways, this way or that way. If they're turning around this way and they see too much speed, they start moving towards the microphone here like that. I'm exaggerating, but this is what a torsion gear does. This is what a helical gear does. You see that? If it's a little bit of speed, it's just going to stay there. If it's more speed, it's going to start moving towards the mic. And once it hits the mic, which is in the case of a torsion, this is the, the differential case, it's going to hit a friction plate. It's going to stick itself and bind. And in a torsion, the whole thing locks up. Yes, torsion even calls their own differentials, self-locking differentials. And then the whole thing is locked. But as you saw that silly demonstration I just did, there's got to be enough speed going on back here for the torsion to lock up and then send power to the front and then it'll hop off the rollers. And yes, I know I'm rambling on and on about the history of the torsion differential, but it relates importantly to how people perceive the four-wheel drive systems on the Lexus GX550. I know the torsion A or one type differential in that crappy video is archaic. Nobody uses the Torsen Type 1 anymore. It's the Torsen Type 2 now, or B, or Torsen C. But the fundamental working principles are the same, and everybody gets it wrong from that crappy video about worm gear and worm wheel. And since everybody gets it wrong, they don't understand the working principle of a torsion. So therefore, when they test it, they think the torsion didn't work because they don't even know what they're looking for because they don't understand the fundamentals. Same thing with the traction control systems. People are expecting wheel brakes on rear axles to somehow send power through two different differentials. It doesn't make any sense. Toyota and Lexus four-wheel drive products are top tier flagship Apex full-time four-wheel drive systems. They've been around, they work, they're proven. But in order to actually test something accurately, we have to know what it is we're testing and how we should test it. We can't just guess like the guy in the Torsen Type 1 differential viral video who didn't understand how it worked and just guessed. So before we start off another new generation of Land Cruiser products where people go, it doesn't work, full-time four-wheel drive is one-wheel drive, blah, blah, blah watch the videos that are in the pinned comment and in the video description. Watch them. Normal torsion operations. Spin a little bit, lock up, and then it goes. Uh -huh. 